Hello again, awesomers. It's me. Hey, it's your old buddy, Steve Simonson, and I'm coming back for another uh, ad hoc episode of the awesomers.com podcast series. Now, today is episode number 167, and so all you have to do is go to awesomers.com slash 167 to see any show notes, details, and occasionally we throw in a, a link or two for you as well. So I'm, I'm doing just a quick um, podcast today to, to share some of my thoughts about the the situation in China with the coronavirus. Uh, last Thursday, I believe it was, I posted a, a message basically saying that I'm postponing all of my uh, China-based travel and probably most of my Asia-based travel until at least after June of this year. Now, some people are looking at me saying, Steve, it's January. What's wrong with you? Why, what's, what's the deal with June? And I've, this particular situation uh, is far more serious or it has the, the makings of something being far more serious than things that we've seen before. In my opinion, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm also not a panicker. Uh, when I see headlines, I don't immediately run uh, for my uh, you know basement or uh, bomb shelter. I am very pragmatic. I analyze things and this is special. So as I said in my message last week, the fact that the Chinese government has taken what really are unprecedented steps is that informs us about decisions we should make ourselves. So uh, you may have heard last week that China closed all 70,000 movie theaters uh, across China. Smart, right? That's where people congregate. That's where our virus could spread. And by the way, um, I, I'm not going to get into the politics of, you know, how this happened or where it happened or the, the illegal wild animal meat or any of that other stuff. I find a lot of that, quite disgusting, I'll be honest with you. Um, but we're not going to get into that today. We may do that another time. But the point is, however it got started, this is just like any other virus. Um, you've seen uh, and heard of viruses on cruise ships, uh, the norovirus, for example. You may have remember SARS or MERS. Uh, SARS just kind of magically disappeared uh, at some point. And the interesting thing about SARS is, you know, it was, it was dangerous. It spread rapidly. And I know there's a lot of misinformation, but from the stuff that I'm reading, from the, the reports that I'm hearing, both from inside and outside of China, this particular coronavirus has not been seen before, and therefore it has no virus, or it has no antidote. Uh, and more importantly, it, the incubation period means that it's been spreading for a lot of time before we actually knew what was going on. And to make matters worse, the people in Wuhan, uh, China, where this originated, they call it the Wuhan coronavirus, they let 5 million people leave the city. And I know that sounds, it sounds uh, crazy to talk about quarantines and, and kind of locking people down, but if I have the virus, I will stay in my house so I don't infect any of you. That's what good humans and good citizens should do. And it doesn't mean we don't survive. We need to get groceries and so on, but we, we find a way. But they let 5 million people leave the city, any of whom could have been carriers without showing any symptoms, without showing any problems. And so what that means is all of those people are contagious at that point where they don't even know they have it, and then they can uh, infect other people. This particular uh, disease shows a, I think they call it an n not rating. Basically, how much will it spread? Anything less than one means it's going to die out on its own. Anything more than one means it can sustain itself indefinitely, really. And this, I've seen estimates from two and a half to three and a half times. So for every one person that gets infected, two and a half to three and a half persons uh, can be in effect, infected by that person, which means this thing could have legs for some time if this quarantine does not uh, hold. So what are the things that are happening? Inside of China, as I mentioned, they've closed the movie theaters. Cool, great. They also closed bottling, uh, a most uh, populous part of the Great Wall. They've closed Hong Kong and Shanghai Disney. Uh, the Ewo market's been extended for its Chinese New Year close um, till February 21st as of uh, this recording. And by the way, all of these things are unprecedented, particularly during Chinese New Year. So for those who don't understand, Chinese New Year is like, it's, it's like Christmas times 10, right? It's Everybody's excited. They're going home to see family. They save up all year. And 
all of this travel, there's, there's now 50 million people in the quarantine area where the trains, planes, and automobiles have been locked down. There is no um, travel allowed in those sections uh, to cross, you know, cross into uh, other provinces or territories. And again, this is in part to try to stymie the spread of the infection. There is speculation that there's far more, and it's far worse, uh, far more information and far worse than the government's letting on. I, I don't have that information firsthand. No, we won't know until we know. There are also plenty of people who probably have the virus who just feel like it's just like a little cold, and it's not really life-threatening to them. This is not uncommon with flus and, and viruses of this nature. So again, I'm not an expert, but I am aware of these threats, and I take very careful uh, analysis of each of these things. And this is one where I'm saying, I'm not going to China. I've encouraged my friends, do not go to China. If you've already booked a trip to China uh, between now and June, so January 2020 and June 2020, I would try to put the kibosh on that and at least reschedule it. I would you know, get your money back. Uh, you do not want to go you know, have a China tragic trip. That, that just will not work. Uh, uh, particularly if you went, you did your business, you got in and out in a week and you felt good and you got back and then you had the virus and you got your family sick. That's the kind of thing that happens with these um, epidemics, right? And I, it's not a pandemic yet because there's really inside of China is where this is concentrated. There are a few cases here and there. As of recording this, there's about five in the U.S., including one here in the Seattle region. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's going to go uh, global. So here's my summary. Stay tuned, stay aware. That's how you stop the spread of a virus. Don't panic. I, I'm not panicking. I'm making pragmatic decisions based on information. For example, when the Chinese government shuts down pretty much everything during Chinese New Year that is of major importance uh, and has the potential to draw big crowds, they killed a ton of that stuff. That tells us, that informs our decision making, that going to China right now is not the right answer. Now I have lots of friends who live in China. My team who lives and works in China, I'm encouraging to stay in as much as possible. We're gonna minimize their travel to the greatest extent possible. So that's, that's the situation. What are the ramifications? Well, first of all, factories are not gonna get back to business as quick as they normally would because of travel restrictions, because of their own fears. Uh, that means it could take much longer to get your orders out of the system. Often, for those uh, experienced people, we know that Chinese New Year happens. We place our orders, we get a bunch out, and then there's a bunch in the queue for right after Chinese New Year. Well, those could be delayed, and in some cases, significantly delayed. We don't know what's going to happen yet. Um, as I said, Iwu is closed till February 21st. I think it's going to push longer than that, personally. And in fact, I think Canton Fair could come under scrutiny because it is such a global uh, convergence of people that uh, it's, it's possible that it will be dramatically impacted if not canceled uh, or postponed. I can tell you firsthand, I'm not going to go there because I don't want to contribute to the problem. I travel a lot. I'm, I'm everywhere. And I don't want to be one of the people who grabs it up. I'll probably be fine but I don't want to spread it around and I don't want you guys to do that either. So that's what I'm talking about when I say don't go to China till at least June, 2020. Uh, there's no reason that you can't conduct business, you know, uh, via Skype or WeChat or what have you until this situation is under control and it is not nearly under control. I don't think we'll know till the middle of March if the thing is, is under control or out of control. And what that means is, there's so many things that can happen between now and then. And I want you guys to be uh, safe. I want you to uh, be cognizant of these facts. And I, I, it doesn't matter what anybody tells you. These are the facts. And the most experienced people that I know in China, and I've been going there the better part of 18, 19 years. I think I went in 2001 or 2002 the first time. And, and I personally am not going. Anybody who is scheduled to go with me, uh, you know, you already got your money back. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to hold your money. That's a, a rude thing to do. <laughs> if somebody books a trip and then the trip is postponed or, or canceled, give them their money back for goodness sake. Uh, don't try to be a, uh, a jerk and hold on to their money. I, I know some people who are experiencing this right now. They don't want to go and the tour operators being jerky about it. 
Uh, Russia's canceling trips to China. Uh, China's tri canceling trips out of China. Everybody's canceling trips. And it's going to be a negative economic impact, but let's think about health as being number one. So that's it uh, for today, everybody. I'll probably put some links to some of the news stories I'm following in the show notes in the, the page on awesomers.com slash 167. Be safe out there. We can be prudent, we can be pragmatic, and we can conduct business without putting ourselves, our suppliers, our friends, and our family at risk. Thanks again, everybody. And please don't forget uh, to go to theawesomers.com slash 167 to see show notes and details. Thanks, everybody.